Now is the perfect time of year to debate a lot of fantasy football topics out there for 2019, and I get it. A lot of you guys are master debaters, but who should be the number one overall pick here in 2019? I have my opinion. Hit that like button, and let's see if we can figure this whole thing out. What is going on, Headliner Nation? Jake, Fantasy Headliners. Hopefully everybody's doing well out there. You heard it in the opening. Today we're talking about who should be the number one overall pick in fantasy football for 2019. And there's a lot of debate out there, and this is the perfect time of year to do that. There's names flying all over. I've taken the top three as of right now. If you go over to fantasyfootballcalculator.com, these are three of the biggest consensus number one players being taken right now in mock drafts. We're going to talk about each of the three and determine which one we feel is best for that number one spot. Now, a lot of people get confused just because you take somebody number one overall more than likely does not mean they're going to be the number one overall fantasy player. In my opinion, your first round pick should be the best player available who is the safest player available because you really don't want to bust on your first round pick. This is the anchor of your team. This is somebody you want there all 16 games. This is the person that's going to touch the ball a lot on a weekly basis, and that's why the names are here on the side of the screen. We'll get into them in just one second. Real quick, though, if you haven't checked out our website, go over to thefantasyheadliners.com. Lots of other material over there, a lot of articles, and we're also doing our draft guide as a pre-order right now for $19.99. You do not want to miss that. We have a ton, a ton, a ton of information out there to help you dominate fantasy football here in 2019. Now, before I get into these names, also head over to Twitter. We're giving away this autographed Juju Smith-Schuster jersey. There's only a few simple, easy, free steps for you to do. If you go and do it, you are entered into a contest as a free drawing to win this jersey. We'll be announcing the winner here the end of May, May 31st. Looking forward to doing that. But now, let's talk about who should really be the number one overall pick here in 2019. I'm going to talk about Zeke Elliott here first, running back of the Dallas Cowboys and when you hear the name Zeke Elliott, you probably think workhorse running back. Mm, you probably think of a lot of things when you hear the name Zeke Elliott. But for the sake of this video, you, you think about workhorse running back. You think about volume. You think about durability. And that's exactly the perfect way to explain Zeke Elliott. So far for his career, he's averaging 22 carries and over 100 yards rushing per game as an average for his career. The biggest knock on Zeke Elliott Fantasy football-wise, was prior to last year, he wasn't really involved in the passing game very much. His career high was only 32 receptions for an entire season. Well, that all changed last year in 2018 when he hauled in 77 receptions, more than doubling his prior career high. Partially because they brought in Amari Cooper, stretched the field, and really realized that they needed to get the ball in Zeke's hands more often. I expect that to continue. We know that Michael Gallup's going to take a small step forward. In his second year, they brought in Randall Cobb, who, yes, I understand, does not stay healthy for 16 games. But at the start of the season, that could really pull defenders out of the box and really give Zeke Elliott a great opportunity, an opportunity that he thrived with in 2018, last season. He was actually number one in the NFL in breakaway runs with a total of 23 of them. Now, a breakaway run is, is a run that is over 15 yards. He was also number two in the NFL in evaded tackles. That is definitely something you want to see from somebody that is going to be a very, very high draft pick for you. Now, we know he's running behind one of the best offensive lines in football. Going into 2019, right now they're graded as the third best offensive line in all of football. We've already mentioned the weapons on the outside that Dak can use to pull those defenders out of the box. And don't forget... This is a very much improved defense in Dallas. Last season for 2018, they were ranked seventh in total defense. And if that's the case, if they can score some points early, and the defense can hold the opponent's scores down low, we could be seeing a lot of Zeke Elliott in second half. So football games, and if that's the case, we'll be reaping the rewards fantasy football-wise. Zeke Elliott is in total consideration to be the number one pick. Last year's rookie phenom Saquon Barkley of the New York football Giants is up next. And this is somebody who's a lot of number ones right now. A lot of people have this guy as their number one overall pick in 2019. And I really can't blame them for it. I mean, this kid 
is one of the best running back talents we've seen in the NFL in a very, very long time. He had over 2,000 yards from scrimmage as a rookie. Last year, ranked number two in the NFL in carries with 261, number three in the NFL in breakaway runs, and number one in evaded tackles. He is definitely, definitely fun to watch, and he's exciting. And he fell into a situation in New York where there's really nobody else to take work from him either. He's going to touch the ball a lot. He's going to be their best player on offense. It's an, it's an average offensive line there also. They're going to be ranked right around 16, 17 or so come start of the season. What I'm really worried about with Saquon Barkley has nothing to do with Saquon Barkley himself. It's the front office of the New York Giants. It's Daniel Jones, to be completely honest. Now, I'm not the biggest believer that you know Eli Manning is the second coming here, and I know a lot of people can't stand Eli Manning, but I like him a lot better than I like Daniel Jones, and if Eli comes out the first few weeks and struggles, is there going to be a push from the front office to get Daniel Jones in the game? If that's the case, I can see opposing defenses not only stacking the box and, and, and pressuring the quarterback, trying to force turnovers, because there is no Odell Beckham on the outside anymore. There is no safety valve out there. You have Golden Tate, Sterling Shepard, Evan Ingram, solid options. But Daniel Jones is not going to be ready come you know week one, two, three. And if they rush him out there, that could be bad news for Saquon Barkley owners. It has nothing to do with Saquon. Like I said, this kid is electric. He's fun to watch. And he can really save your fantasy football team in the matter of just one carry. In the games last season where there was no Odell Beckham, it was only a a four-game sample last season. But in those four games, he did have some good production. However, two out of the four weeks that they did not play together resulted in less than 43 yards rushing. That's a problem. And if that's something that continues and then you add on the added Daniel Jones effect to this potential offense, things could get a little bit scary for Saquon Barkley, kind of like we saw last year with a David Johnson, where he still is going to be a top 10 option. But is he the number one overall pick? There's a few concerns there, but it has nothing to do with him. The kid is is more than talented and has more than enough skill to be the number one overall player here in 2019. Last name on the list is going to be Alvin Kamara, running back of the New Orleans Saints. And I already hear a lot of people out there saying, hey, what about Christian McCaffrey? Yes, there are a few mock drafts where he's starting to go with that number one overall pick. But as of right now, these are the three most common names being selected number one overall. And Kamara deserves to be in this discussion. He had another great 2018. He had 883 yards rushing, 14 touchdowns on the ground last season. Added another 81 receptions for 709 yards through the air. It's his second straight year with over 1,500 yards from scrimmage. And we knew Mark Ingram was going to be leaving town. We were hoping that he was going to be leaving town. And when he left to Baltimore, we all kind of gave a collective virtual high five to each other because we thought we were going to get a full season of Alvin Kamara without Mark Ingram. Remember what happened last season when Mark Ingram was out? Yeah, Kamara had six touchdowns and averaged 152 yards from scrimmage in the four games that Ingram missed. And then the Saints went out and signed Latavius Murray. And if you know anything about Latavius Murray, it's that he's kind of like herpes because he just doesn't go away. He's going to eat into the value of Alvin Kamara. He's going to assume that same Mark Ingram role. They basically took a similar running back, paid him less money, and put him in the same system. It's just going to be a nightmare. Now, obviously, Alvin Kamara is going to be one of the top fantasy running backs in all of fantasy football this season. But as the number one overall pick, there's a little bit of concern there. The Saints have a high-powered offense, a very high-scoring offense, and a decent defense. If they get second-half leads, are they going to pound the rock with Latavius Murray, not wanting to get that added you know, pressure on, on, on Alvin Kamara, risking injury? They're not going to have to be throwing the ball a whole lot. Uh, Latavius Murray is somebody who could eat up a lot of touches late in games, and that's what really, really worries me about Alvin Kamara. Now, does he deserve to be in this discussion? Yes, absolutely, especially in PPR leagues. But last season, in games that Ingram and Kamara played together, Kamara only had more than five receptions four times last season. I'm worried about the workload that he could get if Latavius Murray comes into this offense and has any success. Because if he does, we're going to be seeing a huge split because they're not going to want to risk losing Kamara early in the season. Talent-wise, he deserves to be in the discussion. Situation-wise, I have my doubts with Alvin Kamara. All right, now that we've broken down these three players, who would I take number one overall if it was my choice? If I had the number one overall pick, 
in my mind, I'm looking for safety. I want the volume. I want the touches. I want somebody who I know is going to get the ball on Sundays. I want somebody durable. I want the safest player I can get with the highest ceiling. That's what you're looking for in round one. You're not trying to just guess and hope and cross your fingers that somebody, yeah, maybe these, maybe this situation doesn't play out this way and maybe this happens. I don't want maybes in the first round. If you're asking me who do I choose out of these players to be my number one overall pick, for me, it's a hands-down no-brainer. In my opinion, who am I taking? I'm going with Ezekiel Elliott of the Dallas Cowboys. In my opinion, he is hands-down the safest number one overall pick out there. I know he's going to get the volume. He has an above-average defense. He has an above-average uh, offensive line. An offense is going to be able to move the ball on the ground and through the air. Ezekiel Elliott's going to touch the ball close to 300 times on the ground this season. He's now involved in the passing game and, in my opinion, is the hands-down number one safest pick to go number one overall. I'm not taking anything away from the other guys. I just think that Ezekiel Elliott has less question marks. And that's what I'm looking for. Here in the first round, I want to hit a home run. I want that anchor to my squad. And right now, that's Ezekiel Elliott. But I want to know what you think. Who would you take with the number one overall pick? Maybe you do like Saquon Barkley more, Alvin Kamara, Christian McCaffrey, whoever it may be. Give me a reason down below there in the in the comment section. I would love to go back and forth and, and debate with you guys and really come to an, a conclusion of who is the best number one overall pick. Because there's going to be a lot of people. Think of how many leagues are out there for fantasy football. That's a lot of number one picks going to be made. If we can make this decision a little bit easier on a lot of people, that's what we're here to do. So make sure you share those opinions down below in the comment section. If you're new here, please consider subscribing, hitting that like button for me. And if you are new, put a comment down below. Let me know here that you're here for the first time. I would love to welcome you to Headliner Nation. This is one of the fastest growing YouTube communities for fantasy sports, and I'm looking forward to talking to you guys. Hopefully you have a great rest of your week. We'll talk to you later.